to demonstrate vegetative propagation. Prepare a cotton bed on a petri dish. Take a potato tuber and cut it into pieces in such a way that some pieces have buds and the others do not. Keep all the pieces on the cotton bed and pour some water on them. After some days, it will be seen that small plants come out from the potato pieces having buds, while no plants are seen in the other pieces. If the potato pieces containing the plants are sown in soil, new potato plant will come out. The Bread Mold Experiment Take three pieces of bread and three Ziploc plastic pouches. Put the pieces of bread, one in each pouch. Place the first pouch in a dark place, the second one in a refrigerator, and the third pouch in a sunny area. Care should be taken to see that the plastic pouches are airtight. Label them with a marker. Check each pouch daily to observe the formation of mold. Note your observations in a tabular form. In which condition does the maximum amount of mold grow? To observe yeast cells under the microscope. Pour some amount of warm water into a beaker. Add 5 gram of sugar and 5 gram of yeast powder to the water. Stir gently and observe after 5 minutes. Take out a few drops of this yeast solution on a slide. Cover with a cover slip and observe under the microscope. You will be able to see the budding cells Draw a diagram of the cells that you see. To study the floral characteristics by dissecting a hibiscus flower. Take a big fresh hibiscus flower and observe it carefully. Then separate the different worlds one by one. With the help of a needle. Just above the stalk, the green colored calyx and epigalyx. Remove the sepals with your hand in such a way that all the sepals remain fused. Display on a white sheet. This is the gamosepalus calyx. Next, remove the red-colored petals one by one. All five petals should be kept separately on the same paper. This is the polypetalous corolla. Your hand may become sticky while doing this, as the nectarines are present at the base of the petals. Observe the staminal tube having numerous stamens at the apex. Some of the stamens can be separated and displayed. Make an incision through the staminal tube with the needle to reach the style. Continue tracing the style upwards. You will get the pentaphid stigma and the ovary at the base. Take out this pistil as one unit and display. Make a neat diagram of the parts dissected and write the characteristics. To observe pollination in sweet pea. Sweet pea flower has five petals, one big standard petal, two wing petals and two keel petals. When the bee sits on the flower, it pushes its long tongue inside the keel petals in search of nectar. Due to this, the wing petals are pushed down and the anthers and stigma located inside the keel petals touch the bee's body. If pollen grains are already on the bee's body, then they fall on the stigma and pollination occurs. If the anthers are matured, then the pollen grains get brushed onto the bee's body. When the bee flies to another flower, these pollen grains get transferred to the stigma of another flower. To observe pollination and the pollinators, your biology teacher will take you outdoors either to the school garden or a flower garden in the locality. The class can be divided into 
groups. Each person in the group can find a branch of a tree or a plot with open or receptive flowers. Mark the branch or the plot with a marking tape. Now, carefully examine the flowers and observe their characteristics. That is, the color, the amount of nectar or how sticky the stigma or the pollen grains are. Keep a watch on the marked branch and see how many insects come to sit on the open flowers in 10 minutes. Also note whether any other agent comes to the flowers. Then calculate the average number of visits of each category of visitors. What were the visitors doing on the flower? Does the activity help in pollen transfer? To study the life cycle of a butterfly, make a caterpillar habitat. For this, take two clean plastic 2-liter soda bottles. Cut off the top around the neck of one of the bottles. To make the lid of the habitat, set the base of the second bottle in warm water and then pull it off. Cut a piece of wire screen to fit inside the lid. Put the screen in place. This will give the caterpillars a place to attach themselves. Add the caterpillars to this habitat and place a few fresh, moist leaves inside the habitat. Replace the food supply from time to time. It will take about two weeks for the caterpillar to become pupa. Observe the caterpillars grow. See how much each of them grows. Do all the caterpillars grow at the same rate? Use a yarn to measure the growth. Draw a bar graph to compare the growth of the caterpillars. Maintain a note to observe the daily growth pattern. Once the caterpillars have become pupa, make a sketch. After butterflies have emerged, move them to an aquarium and observe for a day or two before releasing them.